Giza Dream Sheets. Okay, first time playing. We played D4 in the last game. Let's give E4 a whirl. E4, E5. Okay. Let's go Knight C3. So, I'm thinking about the earlier Blitz game. Who will get this... Uh, who will activate the rooks first is what's crossing my mind. All right, bishop c6, c5. I can't get this in d4, but we could go one. Let's do it. Okay. Now, in that Blitz game I played earlier in the stream, I was pointing out after the fact that the computer said, you could, have, you could have played f4. But that was in a different scenario where the bishop wasn't already on this diagonal and h6 was played, an undeveloping move. So I'm thinking a bit differently about playing f4 right here. So for example, f4, there's chop, chop, and then queen h4. She turns out to be a pretty hungry and invasive piece. I don't want to lose a pawn. We go for a quick mate on f7. <laughs> I don't see any real benefit in that. I don't think black is inconvenienced. Here, queen f6. There, knight f3. Maybe I have that. But there's 97. Black is on move in that position. Securing their queen post on f6. Alright, let's let's look at more uh non-beginnerish moves than queen to h5. Uh what's crossing my mind? Probably that one. Candidate move, bishop e6. Let's begin with bishop to e6. Bishop e3. Oh, can I name a square? Let's see how black reacts to that first. Okay, so just like in the blitz game, opponent is not biting. So let's go with this one. Or let me let me go with h3, actually. I'm a, I should have noticed that, you know, if they really want to, they could take and then have my king go uncastled. Uh, I'm not really sweating that because my king should be pretty healthy on D2. I'm going to do similar. We're both uh, keeping the tension between the Bs. Neither one of us wants to open up the F file for the other. So, boom, boom, check, here, eventually I get a tempo back, like a castle by hand, that kind of stuff. My king is cozy here. I don't force, I wouldn't really be foreseeing the center opening up. Mm, it could, but even, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd have an extra pawn around to combat some stuff in the center. I like the pawn on e3 controlling a knight jump for one. So we continue. Okay, 97. Flexibility City with the F pawn. Cool. Okay, I don't have to worry about that. Are we in a Completely symmetrical position, nearly. <sighs> Copycat variation. Hmm. I mean, they're ready to play d5, maybe. 
Maybe I go ahead and chop here. Land a check and then play queen h6. Would that bother them? They'd have to go queenside then. So chopperoni, chopperoni, check, block. No, they don't have to. They don't have to play this. They could play knight, knight to uh, g6. Maybe just queen h5. <laughs> what exactly is she doing? I don't know. Threatening bishop takes bishop. Let's try it. Feels beginner-like. So let's do it. <laughs> that's that's my final reasoning <laughs> before playing that move. Just do whatever feels beginner-like to you. <laughs> All right. I'm once more down on the clock. They're a-tinkin'. I don't want to say what uh, I think black should play here. I'm fearful of stream snipers. It's a very dangerous thing. I have to pick and choose my moments. <laughs> you know? Is this queen going to make a move? Is this pawn going to make a move? I think, uh, I think bishop here would be amazing. No, they didn't bite. Okay, I think queen d7 is one of the better moves. Now, big moment. Or is it? All right, I tell you what, I'm still going to stay flexible here. I think we might end up both going queenside. So the primary difference I'm seeing in the position is the location of the queens. She's out and about. No knight on f6. Is giving up this square. I'm not really concerned so much about g6. I improve, and she seems like she's a stable piece on h6 for at least a move. And I'm not really concerned about my queen getting trapped. Okay. Oh, here's another thing. I should have consid considered this maybe on the last move. But if I take this bishop, you can't take with the pawn. Not winning the bishop. The queen or the knight can recapture. But I still like this idea where I could uh, exchange my bad for their good, and I'm not helping them file-wise in the process. This is sensitive, but the in-betweener of knight takes is not working. After king d2, I'll be winning a piece. So chop, chop, queenside castle? I'll want to defend this. No, I don't like that. Takes, takes, queenside castles. There's then g6, kicking my queen from defending this knight. And then uh, knight takes knight, knight takes knight, queen takes a2. So... Also, they're ready to uh, simply take here and then go here. So I have to, I have to do something about that. Maybe I just chop here with the bishop. Mm, yeah. Okay. So are they going to have a space invader pawn? Yay or nay? I probably should have thought a little bit more about my last move. Oh, you know what I'm seeing here? Yeah, I have to go I have to go back. I don't want to go to the center. Yeah, I'm in trouble. I'm going to go on castle now because after bishop check there's knight d2 or I don't even I don't even know if I want to go here nor play c3 after bishop to a5. Maybe I just do a tight walk, king f1, king g1 and castle by hand like that, but it's still going to be an inconvenience for me. So Okay, they didn't bite. That was that was some bait. I was throwing out some bait there. They didn't, they didn't fall for it. 
Okay, I had that square covered. <laughs> sneaky, sneaky. Watch out for the sneakiness. Who in the chat was maybe believing me? Were you a believer to all those variations? I didn't see it initially, I must admit. <laughs> that queen, whenever she has a, an eye on a square seven steps away, can be tricky to see. All right, I, well, I'm going to have to take some extra care over the dark squares. Okay. My queen clearly needs to find a new home. Is H6 a reliable home? You're not going to hurt me, are you? You're not going to hurt me. G5, I'm just asking for H6. I'll go to... I'll go to... I'll play H6. This one move later, I don't really mind. My queen's also defending the knight, but I'm ready to queenside castle. Do I, do I want to capture on E6? I still don't. Okay, I think they're playing this very well. Maybe now I want to take. And then... I don't know. Gotta go faster, though. I know that much. I'll go queenside. Yeah, I'll go queenside. How to recapture if they take here? Knight is the first one that crossed my mind, but then this knight has an awesome square. F5. Ugh. Maybe I just take and then claim that my rook is ideally placed on the D file. Alright, I have to start going into a faster mode. If bishop takes, how am I recapturing? I think I want to take with the pawn. I like having this move for the knight. It feels like this knight's out of play, even though I'm generating a threat against d5. Um, I think I'll be taking with the a pawn. Yeah, let's make a quick move. I'll do similar. <laughs> Copycat. When in doubt. <laughs> More bad advice. Uh, what I would like to do is establish a pawn here, here, and then throw a knight there. That would be enormous. Maybe I still will take. Why don't I take with the knight? I don't know. This move has been crossing my mind. All right, that one. Sneaky, man, sneaky. All right, let's get this move in. Now there's a pin, actually. Okay, I think I think I spotted a good move here. I think I think I am liking my move. Knight f4. You can't take in this direction. Bishop could back off, but if it backs off, there's still a pin present. It's unprotected on this post. On this square f7. Back about a minute and a half. And forget forget about this f3 move anymore. This this position is going to open up so the e-file i should be occupying the e-file soon this guy right here is strictly defender i i see that bishop It'd be different if this was a hole you know some knight getting in there and then it's it's supported by a bishop but for right now i just see this guy is mr defender for the king very good defender but yeah okay so they there i could even think about pushing Chop away. I'll go with this, though. Mm. Chop, 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 chop. Knight here. They get this pawn. Let's get here first. Open file. Maybe looking at this. Pawn takes, this kind of is a little fancy, but again, I don't want knight f5 hitting so easily. All right, down to the wire. This one will be over in five minutes or so. Good struggle. Imbounce, space for black. Bishop pair for black. I don't think it's a bishop pair that is thriving, but okay, still. This is the stuff that's 
grabbing my attention. I could have also considered queen g7. Why not strike at the bishop directly? Give some direction, move forward a little bit. I don't know how much of an inconvenience it would be. I should have given more thought to putting pressure on that bishop. Okay, so now am I not just winning a pawn? Chop here with the knight? Or the pawn? I'm going to go with the pawn. Let's open the file. And then jump here. Like I was pointing out, the knight, this knight getting here with this, this the, these corresponding squares, the bishop is, is felt here. I did know that that was a move. All right. That'd be a little annoying, I think. Let's go with this now. I'm going to take with this pawn. I want to. I have the flight square now, and I'm anticipating queens off and a very active rook on the seventh rank. So I take the queen first, and then take this excellent bishop. And then activate my rook. So my rooks are playing. Blacks aren't. Only one open file and I have it under control. I should have maybe started with the knight to c4. Yeah, maybe that would have been better. Knight c4. Okay. Oh, no. You know what's better than that? This move. Stops this bishop. Okay. Keep the open file. I think it said the rook back, bishop c5, and then I had a decision. If I want to stay on the seventh rank, there's going to be problems there. So I'm going to, I'm going to go more invasive. Now I start to think about this in a, also a beautiful square on c4. And if they try a flight square here, this with this, a pawn on b6 is a serious, serious thorn. Things are things are looking pretty sweet here. Active versus passive rook is what this one is coming down to. And actually more than that, because I think I have the superior minor piece. Okay, so where else is this guy going to go? This is a nice, cozy square. Let's get him there. King steps over, I get the B pawn. It's very, very, very tough to... To do anything about this rook. Um, is this most precise? Maybe maybe my king coming over here is best. I'm gonna I'm gonna go in this direction so that I could abandon the e file and my rook could start being a hungry piece. Maybe my king somehow gets here. I can make this pawn flinch. So we're going to go here. Now these guys are frozen. Rook can't move, pawn can't move, pawn can't move. This move is only helping me. My king's eyes light up, my knight's eyes would light up to maybe getting to e4. They're kind of tied down. They don't have really any moves. So I guess I want to be careful about moving there. Um, hmm. Let's try that first. I don't know. The king steps over. Yeah, what am I really accomplishing? Now let's go here. I really don't want to give check. Or uh, I really don't want to go to the e-file. <laughs> because then there's this, this check and then that. The rook is activated and defending everything. If I allow their rook to get to the seventh, yeah, then we want to be careful about that. If the king goes here, then I could go here because the check cannot follow with that. All right, I think in the end it's going to be a time winner. And now I could go here. Could have also gone here. That would have been super annoying. My rook remains a pest. Bishop might be dead. Oof. I think the bishop's dead. 
here, here, everything's falling. Should be completely winning. Very good game. Tight resistance there for quite a bit. 